Reading is my favorite way to learn about a new topic. In today's video, we will talk about how I keep track of books that I am reading using Notion. In the last video, we covered a habit tracker. One of the habits that holds us in good state is reading. But we have limited time to read. So in the time we have, shouldn't we be reading something useful? It takes over five hours to finish a book of 75,000 words. If you read at the average speed of 250 words a minute. That's a lot of time to commit to a book that you didn't want to read in the first place. To avoid that feeling, I subscribe to book summaries to check them out beforehand. Some books are meant to be read fully, some in parts, and some suffice if you read summaries. Some as audiobooks and some can be skipped altogether. Book summaries are mailed to me. They used to lie inside my mailbox and many a time I would miss them. So I had to develop a system to be more proactive. So, before you got into Notion, how were you managing your workflow? Before Notion, an Excel sheet was the way to keep track of this. But embedding PDF documents isn't really efficient in Excel. Searching for information in Excel with keywords and linkages wasn't exactly efficient as well. Notion's capability to keep all of my book summaries, reading and notes in one place looks to be the perfect solution to my needs. Notion was a good fusion between Excel, a Dropbox, a Trello or an Evernote and a task manager all rolled into one for this requirement. You can enhance this with Cornell's P2R system. Cornell recommends a system called P2R for reading and note taking which I use while reading books. P2R stands for Number 1. Preview. Get a sense of where you are heading by looking at section titles, diagrams, etc. Number 2. Read actively. Includes reading, highlighting and note-taking. Read in 10-page chunks. Read a paragraph. Then highlight and jot down the salient points. Number 3. Review. After you read 10-page chunks, make broad observations of what you have read and connect to other things you know or have read. So you can jot this down in the inner pages of the Notion default column and you can attach any notes, PDFs that you've created from say good notes that might be useful. The faintest ink is more powerful than the strongest memory. As part of knowledge management, I keep my interesting reads and notes on what I have read inside a database table. I call this book's database table as the library. These days, we consume our books in different forms, like print, Kindle, or audiobooks, and each one of them has its own purpose. Audiobooks are great for quickly absorbing the topic and using it in situations like you're traveling. There are studies to show that reading from print enhances learning and comprehension when compared to reading out of an e-reader. But then again, if you're constantly traveling or moving about, you can't lug around print with you and that's where e-readers become indispensable. Interestingly, studies show no significant difference in comprehension between reading and listening. My library helps me do four things. Line up the books to read next or in the future. Help me put this into my task for me to complete the book. Keep notes around the additional insights I gathered around each book. And of course, keep my library and my book summaries all in one place. The default field I need to keep is the book title, which is also a page where my additional notes go in. To keep my books in a sequence, I have a serial number column. Half the excitement in reading the book is around the book cover. I just import this from Amazon by right clicking on the image and copying the image address. I embed the image link into the book cover column. In case the image changes, so does the book cover. This keeps me abreast of how it looks now. If you go into the gallery view, you will see that the image can be brought up by going into property and choosing what attachment would like it to show. The good thing is that you can also reposition the image so that the best part of the cover is shown in the images. The author column is a drop down. That way I get to see if an author has outstanding content consistently. I read different types of books, business books, photography, film editing, etc. 
So I have included a column called book type. From the time Notion added the ability to add an automated timestamp, I started using that advanced property, created time. In this database, I simply call it the date stamp. Since I read different types of books, so I created a tag column that tells me in three to four words what the book is all about. I upload all of my book summaries to the book summary property column. This way I'm not dependent on my email inbox to rummage around. Some of my friends are good readers who have similar tastes to mine. So I've added another column called recommended. So if a common interest friend recommends it, I would tend to give high weightage to that item in terms of priority. So based on all of this, I put in my priority to read the book. I've added next, top, high, medium, low and zero as the parameters. Zero is when I'm really disappointed with the book summary. After I read the book summary, I get compelled into reading the book. But I have a queue which can't be bypassed since you would want to read every good book. But time is short. So I've added another column why I want to read the book. This is where I decide to read a book and put this into my task list and tick it off to say penciled to tasks. Sometimes I can't really get hold of a Kindle book or an audio book and end up buying print or vice versa. Just to keep track of what I read, I added another column called Format. After I read the book, I tick off the red question mark checkbox column. Simultaneously, I capture the dates red column to keep track of how long ago I read the book. Sometimes I come across a blog post or another article online talking about the book. To keep a tab of this, I added another column, Other Links. If you read Charles Duhigg's book on the power of habit and James Clear's book on atomic habits, you will realize that it's better to read Charles Duhigg's book first. In order to keep this sequence going, I added a relation within the same database by inserting a column called before. After is created automatically. All you need to do is to rename the columns to your liking. After I read the book, it's good practice to put in a personal rating in the rating column. To keep track of when I add this stuff into the library, I've extracted the month and the year from the date stamp as a formula. And this is called month year. I have two additional views I've added for this database. One is for the rating. This is a Kanban view and allows me to go through the book based on the rating with the covers. So this helps me choose the next book I want to read. I can filter this by recommended to get a finer cut or by priority. We saw the gallery view earlier, but we didn't talk about our last database field, which is a formula. It concats property, whether read or not. The red date and the format is one row. So it gets a neat look and you get to see less clutter in this view. In the table, you can also filter out the books you've already read. So this helps you see just the ones that you need to read quickly. It's not what you do, but how you do it. If you're not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of new videos. If you like the video, consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace.